Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. So today's video is pretty interesting. I found a young lady on YouTube who was pretty much giving us her story on how she ended up having a baby by a married man. Now, I wanna preface this by saying, I understand that the girl was extremely young whenever this happened to her, as far as the gentleman pushing up on her and getting in her life in order to get her pregnant. And so I can totally understand where she's coming from. She sounds like a troubled youth who did not have everything that she needed provided to her from her parents. And so because of that, she was desperate. And it sounded like she would take anybody who would help her at this time. And so now that I've said that, let's go ahead and hear her story. We are gonna call him Seal. Phone rang, she said, oh, it's Seal, he wants to talk to you. So I said, okay. Um, I began to talk to him and he was like, can you meet me? Um, I was like, well, I gotta go to Walmart and put in a job application to try to get a job while I'm living here or I'm not gonna have anywhere to stay. So why don't we meet at, meet at Walmart? I went, we put our applications in. He put one in too, cause he needed a job. And um, I put one in, I didn't end up getting a job. I got put out of the place, nowhere to go. I know he had some girl's car when we first met that he was staying with. And um, we went back to the park and he told me, he said, I'm gonna go to Cleveland for a few days. And I was like, okay, I'll be back and we can chill or whatever after I come back from Cleveland after three days or whatever. Come to find out, he went to Cleveland to go get married. And this is unbeknownst to me, we're still kicking it. I don't know what's going on. We go to his house, he's, you know, filling on my thighs, filling on my, but we didn't touch each other until I turned 18. Well, he didn't touch me until I turned 18. So time passes and I get put out of the place. They pay for me one week stay in a dirty ass motel. I never forget that. And after that week, I had to figure out what I was going to do. I had a Page Plus phone and she was like, yeah, this is his number. I called and called and called, got no answer. So I'm sitting in the motel, kind of depressed, like what am I gonna do after this week? As the week's passing, I'm stressing, like what am, where am I gonna go? I know nothing about the city. So he called me and was like, hey, he called me Shorty. He nicknamed me Shorty. Hey Shorty, what's up? I'm only four feet nine. I'm like nothing, just figuring out what I'm gonna do because I, I ain't gonna have nowhere to go after the week is up in this motel. And he was like, oh, I'll put you down, I guess in Detroit, that's what they call it, when you helping somebody get a place to stay. All right, so, so far it sounds pretty, pretty sad. She sounds like a young girl, like I said, who was in some type of group home. And because of the fact that she was unable to provide for herself, she ended up falling into the arms of this man who was probably a little older than her and more able to attain some of the basic needs of life that she was missing. And so I believe, just based on the information, it sounds like she would have believed anything he told her. And it sounds like he was married and pretty much trying to have his cake and eat it too. And I'm not blaming everything on him. I'm just saying that we can kind of see how these circumstances played out. Put you down. So he was like, um, yeah, I'll put you down with one of my homegirls. I got to this place with his friend, female friend, homegirl, whatever you want to call her. And she got the drill in me. Are you sleeping with Seal? Are you, are y'all having sex with each other? Just drilling the fuck out of me. And I'm like, these women must be fucking this man. The whole time, I don't know. St I still don't know that he had went off to Cleveland and got married after he told me he'd be back in three days. He's married already by now. And so I'm like, you know, no, it's not like that. I'm only... 18 he was telling me to lie and say that I was already 18 and I was like, you know, I'm 18. I'm grown da, 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 da. But I, that's not what I asked you. Are you sleeping with him? Are you sleeping with him? I'm like, what the hell? So then I felt uncomfortable and I left He called the house I guess and asked them was I there and they was like, no, nah, she not here He sat up there and he I guess um, I don't know how he found me, but I went back to the motel. I think and he picked me up. He was like, Shorty, you can't be doing that. I'm putting you down. I said, the girl was drilling me and she was all in my grill about whether I was screwing you or not. And he was like, Shorty, that's... Okay, so it sounds like she was being put up or put down in some kind of home. And the young ladies were questioning her as to her relation to this gentleman. Like, how do you know him? Why is he trying to help you out? And it turns out that, yes, he was sleeping with this young girl and probably was sleeping with the women who he was asking help from. 
that's why they cared enough whether he was sleeping with her. And maybe that's what she should have did. So ladies, this is something that we need to take a lesson from. Basically, don't just believe everything that you are told from a guy. Definitely do your fact checking. Make sure that you ask questions because you don't wanna be fooled at the end of the day. This type of thing can happen if you're just going along and going with the flow and not asking any questions. And in her case, like I said, I kinda could understand it. You're young. You don't know probably any better, number one. And two, it sounds like she's grown up in such a messed up situation, like going from group home and foster homes and things like that, that she probably doesn't even have a gauge to judge whether a man is good or not. Who knows if she even knows what a good man is at this point in her life. And it's actually really sad, you guys. Um, and very eye-opening as to how these kind of things can happen. You never want to judge somebody just because somebody has a baby by a married man. There could be so much more to the story. Like in her case, she didn't know. She was young. She didn't ask enough questions. And she didn't because she just was desperate for some some love and some attention and help. I told you to tell him you 18 da, 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 and it ain't like that. Even though he was still on my little legs and thighs when we was down in the basement. So he was like, all right, I got... I got back to the motel. I asked this dude. I said, can I stay a night in your motel? And I was like, I need something to do, like something to smoke to calm my mind because I'm just going through it. And after this week, I'm really not going to know what's going on. And then he didn't place me somewhere where I don't know these girls and these girls drilling me. So I hit the weed. And I feel like when I put my shoes, try to put my shoes on, the shoes are skating across the floor. If I go outside and we walk in, it feel like I'm walking in slow motion. My mouth felt like I had a whole bunch of cotton in it. I don't know if I was high or if it was laced wet. So I went to the hospital. They couldn't, they, I didn't have any marijuana in my blood. So I had to be in bombing fluid. And you know, and bombing fluid is undetective because it's a clear substance. I got released from the hospital and I called my ex foster mom and told her to come get me. She lived in Cleveland. So I went back to Cleveland with her. He couldn't find me. He ended up calling my Page Plus phone. And he reached me and I was at my foster mom's house in Cleveland. He was like, look, I can't be following you around. I really like you and everything, but I'm not going to chase you. And every city you move to, I'm not going to move. So I was like, all right, fuck it. I don't know. I guess things got sour and I ended up in a homeless shelter at 18. And he would come pick me up. He had a blue something. I forgot what he had, like a blue regal or something. And he would drive to the homeless shelter and come pick me up. Too. And one day we went to his people's house, his aunt's house. His aunt said, I heard you jumped the broom. I'm looking at this dude like, really? Oh, so I'm but her like, because that means he got married. I'm like, man, dude, I done got attached to this dude. He followed me around. He, We spent time together. I'm starting to like him. I was young, 18, nowhere to go. Didn't have anybody else to hang on to. And I caught feelings for this guy. And look, man, I am married, shorty, but uh, we can still hang out and be friends like a big brother and big sister thing. And I was like, okay. I really didn't want it that way. I wanted more than that because I had got attached to him and I didn't have anybody else to cling to. So I told him, okay, but it ended up being more than that. Um, this was in the span of two or three weeks of us hanging together after finding out that he had jumped a prom. I got to the shelter and I, when I wake up the, the smell of the chicken starts to make me sick to my stomach and she was like do you think you're pregnant I'm like no nah, why would I be pregnant so she finds out she's pregnant two weeks after finding out that he's already married and because she's already involved and has all these feelings even that red flag of wow you literally are not even married you're already married to someone else that wasn't enough for her to cut ties but it was probably too late anyway, seeing as how she was pregnant two weeks later after that incident. <sighs> what can we say about this? I mean, she's a young girl who obviously chose the wrong guy and she was messed up in, in the wrong situations. She didn't have any money, nowhere to go, no job. She probably wanted somebody to come pick her up and take her places. It's all pretty understandable. But it's eye-opening at the same time because this is a lesson that can be learned by anybody watching this. If you're a young girl, you need to have what's called self-worth. And once you find out that a man is dating, talking to, seeing any other woman, and I mean any other woman, you need to leave him alone. Because you know what? If you prefer a monogamous relationship, then you have the right to have that. And you don't have to put up with anything less. 
Now you don't have to try to change the man. That doesn't mean push up on him and force your way. No, it means just leave him alone and make sure that you stay open and available to the right guy who is going to make you his number one or his wife or what have you. As far as learning to stay away from these womanizing type of men, my only suggestion is from the get-go, you need to pay attention to red flags. Anytime a guy is like willing to do so much for you financially, um, coming to pick you up, providing you with places to stay, anything like that, you bet your lucky charms that at the end of the day, he's going to want something from you in return. And so that is why it is, it's almost like a good thing to have a job and to have your own so that you don't have to put up with stuff like that because I have heard that women who deal with men that are rich or have the really high value, they tend to feel as though they can date multiple women because they can afford to do it, number one. And then you will have women like her who will be in desperate situations in which they'll go ahead and just accept this type of behavior. But there's a little bit left of this video. Let's hear what she's got to say. I took the pregnancy test and I waited. My heart was just like about to pound out my chest. I'm like, so it comes back positive. I slide down in the bathroom in the star and I sit on the floor and I start crying. She was like, what's wrong? I'm like, he married. How can I tell him I'm pregnant? She was like, well, honey, you're going to have to tell him. So I call him and I'm like, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. Can you get to me? He's like, no, nah, just tell me now. Tell me now over the phone. Now let me tell you something. I don't do the I'm pregnant shit over the phone. I want to see your facial expression. If you had a wrong facial expression and the wrong goddamn on answer. When I tell you what the issue is, I'm going to punch you right in your motherfucking face. I'm going to punch you right in your motherfucking face. I'm going to punch you right in your motherfucking face. So, he like, tell me now, tell me now. We, he gets to my mom's house. He like, come down, I'm outside, I'm outside. All right, I lost all my sympathy for her in that moment. She's gonna punch a dude right in his face just because he may not be happy that you're pregnant, but you're a side chick. You're some 18 year old, technically homeless young lady without a job or anything going for her. Who would be happy if you got pregnant? Just judging off of how you look right now, you couldn't have been an extremely beautiful woman back then either. And I know that's not everything in life, but sometimes, sometimes, and I can understand because I, I'm, I'm a person, right? And I can put myself in other people's shoes. And if I was a guy and I got her pregnant, I wouldn't be particularly proud or happy about it because she's not attractive, point blank period. Nothing attractive about her. She's got a very rotund face. She's got kind of like four or five necks and they're connected right to her chest. She's overweight. She's just not pretty. She's just not attractive. So no dude is gonna be jumping for joy because you're pregnant, especially because you're a side chick. And at 18, I'm sorry, you should know how to prevent pregnancy, especially if you ain't, gosh, you have nothing. You have no job. You have no place to live. You're like begging for strangers to help you. And yet you don't prevent pregnancy. You don't tell him to wear a condom. You don't you don't try to get yourself on some type of birth control, which is obviously free for people who are poor. So you could have easily gotten some kind of Medicaid or something. So this is where she lost me right then and there. The fact that she said she was going to put her hands on this man just simply because he may or may not have been happy about her being pregnant. But who would? Nobody. Thank you. There's like 20 more seconds of this crap and I'm done. I, I swear. Like I was all for her until that moment. All right, so I sit in his passenger side. I don't say nothing. He don't say nothing. He, I kind of get quiet. He like, what's up? And I'm like, I'm pregnant, man. I, shit, you don't know what to do. I don't know what to do either. Shit, I'm eight. I just turned 18. So he like, I ain't going to run. I ain't going to tuck my tail, da, 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 this and that. I don't know. That's the end of the video, you guys. What do you think? Do you think he tucked his tail and he ran off? Or do you think he stuck around and divorced his wife and married her? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not the second one. Tell me what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.